Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. Today is a very special day as we celebrate 100 episodes of The Daryl Roy Show. Over the past two years, I've interviewed celebrities, entrepreneurs, and people from all walks of life, sharing their path to success, failures, triumphs, and inspirational advice that they've learned along their journey. Let's take a look at some of those memorable moments. You can fly high have to learn from failure and you have to decide what is going to happen what what decision you're going to make after you fail yeah I failed many times but success is defined by the decisions that you make after failing I think when I was young doing stand-up someone another stand-up told me to try to tell the jokes that only I could tell um, and I think that's a good uh, piece of advice for anyone who has a creative pursuit I guess is just try to make the things that you really think only you could make and to be honest to yourself and yeah, to make stuff that you know you would like. Yeah, you've had so much success and as you said, you know, you sold your company uh, to mm -hmm. uh, uh, your beauty brand, but you know, yeah. uh, but you really were the face of it and you were really the person yeah. that, you know, launched it. Have you been surprised by your success so far, just in every aspect? Of course. <laughs> oh my God. You know, I have felt like, I felt like an outsider my entire life, you know, even within my own family unit, I really didn't feel like I belonged a lot of times. And so, you know, I'm used to people kind of criticizing or being weirded out by my eccentric weird style and uh and you know to have like people embrace it it's pretty uh, it's pretty mind-blowing you know i still sometimes wonder like wow you guys really like me or you know <laughs> i just can't like wrap my mind around it we talked about some success but let's talk about the challenges like what kind of challenges did you face in the beginning of your career and how did you get through it because it might inspire someone out there who's trying to make it and you know maybe is giving up i mean my challenges are not uh normal challenges i mean i'm i come from a very dark past and my mom my mom was a drug addict my dad was a drug addict i was a drug addict for a long time i was in jail for three years and um that's just the beginning of a couple of my challenges, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but what I'm what I'm trying to say, if you if you want a message for these young people that are listening, I came from the darkest hole that you could imagine, mm -hmm. and if I did it and I did good, you could do it too. It's all about yeah. discipline, mm -hmm. faith in God, and you're gonna make it. You can't always be on top, and you must be at the bottom for. Sometimes you must you must be there to be able to see uh, how to get yourself out. You know what I mean? And, and it's such a, a big accomplishment when you do. So that was the biggest advice in my life. Uh, it, it gave me patience. It gave me an understanding of timing. Mm -hmm. It gave me um, uh, just resilience. Mm -hmm. It gave me this this ambition or this this philosophy to. Just keep trying, trying again. If uh, ten times you cry, ten times you dry your eye, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think my character was forced to find inner strength. It was a question of find it or die. And I think my character is strong anyway. He's a neurosurgeon, he's a doctor, he's a, a thinker. But I think in this case, hi. In this, <laughs> in this case, he needed to, you know, partner up with someone he didn't know. And he had to trust her instincts as well as she had to trust his instincts, you know. And they got satisfied. I continue to grow. And, and um, uh, so that that's cool. It's, it, it's fun to watch people hate, mm. knowing that the hate is being generated only because they quit and I didn't. Yeah. Because I'm not really, I don't really think that they're hating on me. I really don't think that they're, they're talking about me. I, I think they're really talking to themselves about their own frustration of like, because they could have done exactly what I did and didn't. Mm -hmm. and, and I know anyone can do what I did. Anyone. If, if, if people did exactly what I had done along the way, mm -hmm. and there's other people that have done 
a thousand times bigger than I'm anything I've even, uh, you know, partially accomplished, but anybody can achieve what I've done. If you can leave one piece of advice that maybe that someone gave you or a mantra you live by, what's something that, what piece of advice would you give our audience on kind of achieving success and kind of believing in yourself? Well, I, you know, I, I, think, I think you just hit the nail. You have to believe in you before you sell you to anybody else, you know? Yeah. Uh, in, in my case, uh, if everybody could see my vision, then they'd go do it, you mm -hmm. know, so sell your vision. So if, if you're selling your vision and most people aren't grasping to it, it simply means that's because you're special. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because if everybody could see it, then they'd just go do it. You know what I mean? But if, if you got a plan and a vision for yourself, uh, you really just got to work hard to it. I like doing things and people thinking, wow, I didn't expect that. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. uh, and that's kind of my little high that I go for. I like proving people wrong mm -hmm. in that sense. They'd be like, oh, well, you know, that can't happen. And, this, da, 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 da. and then you just, you know, blow them out the box, you know. Not that it would change because they'll still, you know, unfortunately in this game, sometimes people fail their way up. But <laughs> yeah. And last but not least, you know, our show is all about inspiration. That's why I created this platform to inspire people to live their best life and show success stories like yours. So what advice do you have for anyone that is afraid to follow their dreams and take that next, take their dreams to that next level? They're afraid, they're not seeing results. What would you say to them to encourage them to live their dreams? If you're already doing what you love, you've got success. And if if you haven't reached this level you think you want to get to, then you're going to have to work harder. Hmm. Like you're going to have to do things that you were not doing. The things that got you to where you're at are not going to be enough now. You're going to have to add to that. You got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. And you know, I always like to end the show on a positive note and I want to talk about, you know, we have a lot of viewers and entrepreneurs who maybe are afraid to, you know, go after their dreams and goals because my show is all about inspiration and inspiring our audience. So, you know, for our viewers that are maybe afraid to pursue their goals or they're going through a hard time, what advice do you have for them to maybe, you know, follow their dreams and become a success like you did? Well, you just got to... I mean, nothing in life is easy, man. Nothing is easy. Yeah. So if you really, really, really want to do something, you stick with it and you just don't give up because eventually the sun is going to shine on you. It'll come around to you. You know what I mean? So like I didn't make it overnight. You know what I mean? It took me a long time to, to break through and become commercially successful, mm -hmm. you know? So it's a grind. But, you know, if you really believe in yourself and you believe in what you're doing, you just stick with it. Just stick with it long enough and it'll 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 happen. I really don't believe that the universe, God and serendipity, fate, insert whatever you know noun you want there will conspire on your behalf mm -hmm. to sell it something. I do believe you you've got to authentically love it in order to do all of the harder stuff that goes along with being successful. So let's talk about one of the milestones you've had in your career because there's I'm sure there's been so many you know over the years but what's one milestone that really stands out for you um, in your career that where you were like okay I made it <clears throat> um, the milestone was um, well I'm gonna show I'm gonna I'm gonna do two so um, you know in, in the music business, we really had to prove ourselves back in the days, you know, mm -hmm. like, um, you know, growing up in L.A., it was, you know, music, music industry was predominantly like gangster music back in the day. So, mm -hmm. um, sure. you know, we would we would make demos, demonstrations and send them to like record companies. And, you know, we would always get like, you know, because we were so different, we were, mm -hmm. you know, break dancers and 
positive lyrics and and just um, the culture of hip hop, you know. Yeah. And you know they were like, oh, you know, you guys are talented, but I don't think your music is that is tangible. It's, wow. it's tangible, and you know. Yeah. And you know it was that was pretty devastating to hear. Like, you know, I'm like tangible. What is that? <laughs> is that <an> orange? <laughs> They tell me it's tangerine, tangible. No, <laughs> and uh, we really had to prove ourselves. You know, mm-hmm. we 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 were like, you know, we would not, we would we take no for an answer, and we're gonna prove it. We're gonna prove it that our music is tangible, whatever that <laughs> word is. Next up on the show, we have Becky Choi, who is a postpartum corrective exercise specialist. Becky created her company, Tummy Warrior, which helps hundreds of women look and feel confident again after giving birth. Becky, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thanks for being here. You know, today's a really special day because I'm actually celebrating my 100th episode. Oh my goodness, congratulations. That's so amazing. Wow. I'm so humbled to be on the show on your 100th episode. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, this one's a big one for me. Over the past two years, we filmed many episodes, but this is my hundredth. So this one is extra special and it's really nice to have an inspirational story like yours, uh, you know, to be featured on the show for my hundredth. But we're going to get into your story in just a little bit. Let's talk yeah. about your personal journey um, with Tummy Warrior. I know that you had a personal journey with diactasis recti. So let's talk about that. What is it? and uh, tell us about your own personal experience with it. Absolutely, I love to tell you about my, about my story. So, you know, I was one of those typical skinny Asian girl. Weight was never my issue. I could eat whatever I wanted. I never had to go to the gym and exercise and I would still be like, I, I was skinny fat, but I wouldn't consider myself fat. But uh, that all changed after my first baby in 2016. I gained probably about 30 to 40 pounds during pregnancy. And then even after a few months postpartum, I was still about 30 pounds overweight. But you know, I would do it in a heartbeat again for my baby. If I were to gain over uh, that much weight, I would do it again. But you know, when you walk by the mirror and you saw yourself, you just don't recognize that person in front of the mirror. And you're like, oh, who is that person, right? In this, inside the mirror. And then I saw my clothes collecting dust in the closet. It, it was really upsetting for me. And then what's more, when I went to a friend's birthday party and she just had her baby probably a few weeks just before me. and she looked amazing I'm like how did that happen like why does she look so amazing and I still look like that so I'm like as tired as I was I didn't care I'm like I had to do something I had to do something about myself I wanted to show up better show up more energy for my kids and family so then I started doing workouts at home I started doing all these kind of cardio exercises, hit workout, crunches, you name it, everything. So I lost some weight. I lost about 20 pounds. And then all of a sudden, I kind of see myself, why does my stomach still look a little weird? It, it was, it would dome and cone, like it would make this weird shape that I didn't understand. And then so I, I went around the circle, went to like a chiropractor, uh, a hernia specialist, and then finally went to my doctor. And then she's like, oh yes, you have a condition called the diastasis recti. And so I'm like, what? What is this? Like this? That was the first time I heard of this term called the diastasis recti. And so basically, it's an abdominal separation after having a baby. So then I I was like, okay, maybe I should do something about it now. Uh, but you know, shortly after that, I was blessed with my second baby in 2018. And then and then they're like, ah, oh, you know what? You can't really do anything about it during pregnancy. So I didn't, I didn't really do much until after I gave birth to her. And then that's when I started really intensively researching and learning more about this topic and postnatal conditions uh, and everything else. So here I am, uh, uh, yeah, where I'm helping moms uh, getting back in shape, getting strong and feeling very comfortable in this self. Absolutely. And, you know, for our viewers that don't know, or what are some signs of diactasis recti? Because I'm sure some people maybe just think it's a weight gain, but they don't know that it could be a medical issue, right? So what are some signs that people can look for? Yeah, so it's actually really common, and but we don't talk about it enough with our OB or midwives, I feel. Most most of the time, they only 
they look at the baby, is the heartbeat right? I like, is everything okay with the baby? But they don't talk about enough with the women, with the mom. But what it is essentially is when you were when you're pregnant, you have to your muscles has to grow, has to stretch to accommodate your growing baby. And then so it, to some point when you're full term, those muscles are just so stretched out. And and for some moms after they give birth, this muscle will go back to where it originally where it should be, where it would close back. But for some other moms it would stay stretched and thin and very weak in that area and some signs you will notice is like even after a few months or even maybe a year or two years after postpartum and you will still see that your stomach bulges out like you would describe yourself I still look like pregnant even though I you're not and then you would when you're exercising let's say you're getting on and off the floor with your baby getting on and off the bed or lifting something heavy like your car seat you would feel like really weak in your core and you probably might see some like a doming or coning shape vertically on the abdomen then you know that there is a signs of weakness and on top of that uh it's very common to you have a back pain because when you have a weak core, your back always has to compensate for you for you to stand upright, sit upright. So it's always doing overwork. Mm -hmm. And then so your back is very tense and sore. And then another thing to watch out for is uh, you might have urine leaking, like incontinence. So it, it might be an isolated event, but it could be the sign that, okay, your core is really weak. So like that's why the pressure has to go somewhere like your pelvic floor. Oh, very interesting. And I want to talk about the name Tummy Warrior. That title really stood out for me. So, you know, what does that title, what's the symbolism behind it? And what does that mean for you as a woman and a mother? Yeah, so I love this question and thank you for asking. Um, so, you know, a lot of the mom will say that you have your baby for nine months. It will take nine months for your body to recover, to re-nourish and get back to where it original should be. And you, sh you should take some grace, give yourself some time. And I totally agree with that. You should take grace and uh, give some time for yourself. But at the same time, I believe that if you're not happy with the way you look, if you're not happy with the way you feel, you're not comfortable about it, you don't have to put up with it. You can definitely do something about it and not make that this as an excuse that oh this is the way how mom should look like uh, after baby this is how a mom body should be like after baby you can definitely do something about it and i think that being strong like a warrior I mean you can show up better for your family being strong that you can put yourself first for your family you can roll around the, on the floor hold the baby take with the baby with strength all on your own strength like a warrior so like we are all mom warrior we are, we are tummy warriors I love that, right? <laughs> Us as women, we are warriors, right? <laughs> we can yeah. we can bear children, we can we, we run the world. So let's just keep it that way. <laughs> yeah, like we are men. Oh, come on, like we are so much better than men. <laughs> I, I wanna talk about you know, you help women lose weight. So what are some mm -hmm. steps that they take in your program to lose the weight? <laughs> yeah, so maybe I would step back and probably talk about how I did it. I think that would relate to a lot of the viewers here who are listening or watching. And so after my first baby, I I just kind of did my workout and I was telling you about my story. I did the workout at home after my baby sleep at nighttime in the basement. But with the second one, it's just a lot harder. And you, you by the end of the day, you just wanted to sleep. You, you don't want to think anything else. It's so tiring. And um, and also my daughter was very needy at that time. So like we, I always have to breastfeed her. So like never get enough sleep. So I couldn't do it at nighttime. So what I did was I did the workout during daytime with my baby and toddler around me it's actually really great because it's like one stone kill two birds yeah. you can throw a broadway show to them like they see you panting they see you running up and down jumping like that and they they kind of have fun with it too and then at the same time i get myself done and it's like it's like yeah it might not be perfect it, it, you get interrupted many many times mm -hmm. <laughs> but at the same time you get what you you need to do done and and that's that's what it is just have fun and what's also good about it is that you can actually show your kids what what determinations and consistent can do for you and so that you can show up to them and portray that healthy lifestyle and give, show them that whatever you're thinking you can get to it yourself because mommy yourself is an example 
Yeah. And then so, yeah, yeah. So, and in terms of the weight, right? Uh, so, yeah, workout is one thing. So, do the workout, but also nutrition is also a big part component of of uh, helping you to lose the weight. Because if you do all the workouts and you don't do the nutrition, right? If you just eat kind of whatever, then you then you're not gonna be able to lose the weight. Absolutely. You know, they say that abs are made in the kitchen, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about the different products that you, you guys offer. And as well, I know that you wrote a book. Um, so let's talk about that as well. Yeah, sure. So um, so with the program, and I'll talk about the program and then, yeah, and I'll talk about the book. So with the program, I'm not here just to hand you a workout plan or PDF plan or like a nutrition plan and then moving on. But I'm actually here to help you to hold your commitment to say that to help you to reach whatever goal you say you're going to do. So with my program, it consists of three components, the nutrition, the workouts and the accountability. So with the nutrition, I focus on um, uh, the portion control, customization, as well as as a bloat reducing strategy to help you to reduce bloats, reduce inflammations, and but it's a more customized uh, portion control where you're not following a specific diet or a specific plan. That you know some people, if you go. Uh, lots of nutrition plan online or like even some nutritionists will tell you okay you have to exactly eat like this right mm -hmm. and then you have to maybe weigh in your food or track your food but with me I don't think that's sustainable because I, I can tell you to eat chicken and broccoli all day and then like, you're gonna lose 10 pounds 20 pounds for sure but how sustainable is that how feasible is that after the program and I so I help you to know how much to portion Right. So you're eating all the food groups, you're not overeating and you're not under eating. And let's say like, where are you going to fit that bubble tea? I love bubble tea. Uh, we're in Toronto here, we have lots of store of bubble tea here. So like, how are you going to fit that bubble tea here, uh, here and there? And then how are you going to fit, uh, let's say the fried chicken, like you have to have fast food, right? Maybe you're just crunching time to get something. How are we going to help you to portion that into your lifestyle? So it's not about um, what you're eating is about how much you're eating and how uh, often you're eating those kind of good food or like the, the food that are not so good, but you make an informed choice for yourself that I empower you to make that choice for yourself and also to identify what's emotional eating and stress eating. So that's nutrition. And then with the workout, it's what I call the progressive combo training. So it, it helps you to start from the foundation first, where we need to look at your core. Mm -hmm. It's postnatally, whether you have diastasis or not, your core is generally a, a lot weaker than other parts of the body. So we need to help you to get the foundation first and then continuously to progressively build up your strength to do, doing some cardio. So then you can uh, chase after your toddler and baby and then also do some toning and strength training. So then you can actually help you tone up and, and feel good and be looking good in, in your clothes. And then lastly, and I think it's a very important component for most of my uh, warriors, at least it's the accountability mm -hmm. and the coaching guidance. So uh, a lot of the moms can do exercises on YouTube or whatnot. And then, but then it, it's hard to know whether you are doing them correctly or not. Like you're not sure if your form is correct. Now, if your form is not correct, and which I had done completely the wrong way in the beginning and I have no clue about it. But like if you're not doing your form, your form is not right, you're, you are not going to exercise as efficiently. So you might be just spinning around the circle doing the same exercises, but you're not really targeting that core muscles enough uh, efficiently. So you, 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 we will help you to um, look at whether you are doing it right or not through videos analysis and also helping you to check in, uh, you know, give you some tough love if you need some motivations and give you feedback or whatnot on your food or, or other stuff. So then we are here to hold your commitment and really help you to succeed and reach your goal. Mm -hmm. um, and then you also ask about my book, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, actually I have my book here. So oh, it's right very here. nice. <laughs> yeah, it's available on Amazon. And so while I was on my journey, I wanted to write a book and spread my message around the world, especially there are lots of information online out there saying, oh, you should do this, you shouldn't do that, or maybe it's too late to heal your diastasis now. Or like, um, so there are a lot of information. And even if you go to like a physical therapist, 
or like your doctor there's lots of jargons like mm. they will talk about perfect floor I'm like what floor <laughs> what floor are we talking about <laughs> and then like and then like we they will talk about like anterior pelvic tilt uh, like posterior pelvic tilt so it's those are big words and for moms like just us general normal people we, we don't know what they are so I wanted to put my message and and give some actionable tips in my book so that like, even 11 years old uh, can understand what I'm trying to say and what they can do to take actions right away. And some for like other parts of the world, they are a little bit less educated. Maybe they're more conservative in terms of women's health or postpartum. So this is where they can actually find uh, trustworthy information through my book. And and yeah, I, I, I wanted to spread that message further. And so like a lot of people can have an impact and feel good and being empowered about what they uh, what they want to do postnatally. Yeah, absolutely. I love that, that you include nutrition as well as the working out together and that you also wrote a book about it to give, you know, your clients even more information. I, I really think that's great. And looking at your website, I was scrolling down and I see a lot of before and after pictures. So you've helped a lot of women look and feel better. Let's talk about the biggest success story that you've heard so far from one of your clients. Yeah, so many. They, it's it's a life changing and measurable story. It's it's it's. I'm humble. I would so much gratitude for these women trusting in me in their journey. So like even uh, a lady I helped last year, and she would be telling me, oh, how life changing it is for her, because with my program, she she never used to work out, and with my program, she started working out and making this her lifestyle, and now she's able to have fun and being able to chase after her baby, and I've been doing do so much more outdoor activities with her, uh, with with it, with her baby, because she feels so good, and she's not feeling that there's like weakness in her body, that she has the energy to do that. And then so I feel so happy because, you know, from not doing anything from sedentary at home to like active lifestyle. And then another mom, a twin mama, um, she just finished my program not too long ago. Like she's a server, but because of the diastasis recti, she is constantly having back pain and she couldn't use her core to serve properly. But after the program, she's able to go back to serving, go back to the to the water and show her twins like, oh, what mommy is doing, right? What mommy loves doing. And then another story I had just recently, like last week was like a mama, was telling me she was like on her belly, sledding down with her baby. Like she felt so good because she couldn't do that before without pain yeah. and hurting herself. And like she's now able to do that. So like this story really, really makes me so happy and, and with so much gratitude for them. That's great that they look better, but they also feel better and their quality of life has improved with your program. Yeah. So I think that's really great what, what you're doing. You know, as an yeah. entrepreneur and woman in this space, what are some challenges that you face either, you know, professionally or personally? And how did you get through it? Yeah, for sure. So definitely is the mindset, the mindset, especially the imposter syndrome. So you know how a lot of fitness trainer or like um, other trainers out there, they start with um, a university degree in science or biology or biomechanic, and then they would get certifications and then they go to the gym to work with people and then da 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 da. But for me, it's completely backward. For me, it's like I didn't need to work out. Fitness was never really my thing. And then until I had my baby and because of my own story and journey, I started studying and start, I started learning from all these experts around the world. I started asking questions and, and being the certified postpartum exercise specialist I am today. To, and then to help other mama. So my story is backwards. So sometimes I feel like, oh, I'm not worth it. Like th she has a, a master in nutritionist and she has this certification, that certification. And she like, like so I, my story is backwards. Like, so I always have this like, oh, am I worth it? Is it like, it, can I actually help people? Mm -hmm. But the, so the, what my advice for the entrepreneur out there, if you're feeling like how I was feeling with imposter syndrome is that you just have to take massive and messy actions. Mm -hmm. You just have to keep going, keep keep doing what you love, keep 
keep keep going like following your passions and one day some people were gonna come to you like you changed my life or like you did so many amazing good things to me your confidence level is gonna boost up you're gonna feel so empowering you feel so good and you know that you're taking that right steps but you have to take massive and messy action yeah it's not sunshine and rainbow it's gonna be hard but you just have to keep going and keep doing it and eventually that confidence will come if you don't do anything that confidence will never come and you'll always feel like that you're not worth it that you can't do this that you have this negative mindset in you so that, that would be my biggest advice is like keep going uh, rainbow happens at the end of the tunnel that's my favorite line <laughs> yeah absolutely we're all warriors right inside and I like that you said imposter syndrome because I think that so many of us go through that even if we have a degree in something or we have the education even on that side you know some people feel like you know they can't do something or they're an imposter or that mm. more people have more experience but i think you know what's relatable is someone sometimes ex it's not about just having an education it's also about having the knowledge and having the passion and having the real life experience like like you did going through it so it's it's more relatable for women because you went through it yourself you know so when you teach them it comes from a place of of experience so i think that's great what you're doing and where can our viewers find out more about your programs and join them yeah thank you so you uh viewer can find me on instagram at becky Choi underscore so this is where i post a lot of the educational content as well as motherhood and some inspirational contents like um transformations of my own clients so then they know that there's hope that there is actually something that you can do about diastasis recti it's not just surgery is the only options or like that that that's never going to be possible so they can definitely find me in my instagram and also chat with me like dm message me i'm always there i wanted to get to know you more i wanted to get to uh, know how, how how their situations are and then we can chat about the next step maybe uh yeah having a consultation cost that up as well Amazing. Well, Becky, we're going to list all that information below for our viewers to check it out. Thank you so much for being on the show today. It's inspirational what you're doing. You're helping women look and feel better and improving their quality of life. So I commend you for it. Thank you for celebrating my 100th episode with me. It's, it's, it's great to have an inspirational story like yours. So thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Daria. Thank you. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.